this is like the stupidest fucking debunk I've ever seen in my life. We spent $40 million in 20 years because Russia tricked us into studying psychic powers and it was deemed useless and illegitimate in the end. That's it's all I'm still, trying to say. It's still being used. I will let you share fast. So, my point has been made. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Far Out with Faust, Believers versus Skeptics, Episode 1. I'm joined by my adversary today, Nick Lerman. Nick, say hello. What's up, everyone? You know, Nick's... wait, my name is Nick, but That's some right. call me the genius who lurks in the shadows, the voice that you hear whispering in the wind at night. <laughs> when people discuss the powerful controlling the free world, Faust, I am that unholy deity pulling the puppet strings. Ah, uh, you oh. see, you see my adversary is worthy. <laughs> no, listen, what we're going to debate today, what we're going to talk about is the one and only Yuri Geller. Oh. Yuri <coughs> is <laughs> Yuri's a very famous man. Um, he became famous in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, he came into a very kind of prominent position because he was very much an extrovert. He was known as a magician, but he was also known for a lot of paranormal abilities. Um, and uh, we are going to discuss kind of the life and times of him because Nick believes him to be a fraud and I know him to be the real thing. So here we are. Nick. I, mean, I wouldn't call him a fraud. He's what you called him earlier. He's a, he's a stage magician. And he's, he's not a, really a good one. <laughs> if he's a stage magician, he is the worst stage magician in the history he of is. stage magicians. I, I agree. I fully agree with you. Well, I guess that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. All right. thank, you for, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> no, listen, um, he's not a magician. If he was a magician, he he literally, I mean, he would have been outed from day one. The problem really magicians have with Yuri Geller is Yuri claims that he does his um he, his abilities come from him himself that he doesn't claim that they're an illusion and magicians have a problem with that particularly one magician who died a very unhappy man the uh, very not amazing randy who spent his life debunking yuri geller because and destroyed uh, him we're gonna watch so many great analyses today. he didn't so what my my <laughs> adversary is referring to is the <laughs> stint that that uh, Yuri had on Johnny Carson. No, no, but, no, no, no. I'm talking about the multiple collegiate speeches he gave where he debunked multiple, like basically we're going to break down so many horrible performances today, some of which Yuri didn't even know a camera was recording him. That one is going to be so good. Oh, that's fine. We're going to get into all of it. We're going to see <laughs> who has what kind of evidence to back it up. But a little bit about Yuri Geller. Um, Yuri is famous for his spoon bending. He went on TV and was like, I can bend the spoon. And he got right in and, and you know, all of a sudden kids and, and people all over America were tearing up their silverware. And he, he was a, a phenom. You know, he he spoke about how to do it. And funny enough, when children would hear it, particularly they would be able to take right to it. Adults usually took more time. Now, look, there's a, anybody can take a spoon and, and try to f exert enough force to bend the spoon. Okay. And that's what magicians do when they do it. When, when it's a stage trick, they know how to exert force and, and bend the spoon. Okay. There's a difference between doing it like that Could you and say doing it bend the, the way spoon like this, just holding it, how Yuri does it, how Yuri does it. Yuri, Yuri can bend it without even touching it. Everybody just saw me open. Well, let me finish telling them about Yuri first. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So Yuri was brought to the uh, attention of the CIA in, in the early 70s because there was um, a, a contact they had in Israel who had, who had spent at, at least a year kind of following Yuri around and studying him. That guy's name was uh, Andrzej uh, Purhich, and he was a physician 
He's an author. He's a polymath. He's a physicist, a very uh, logical guy who, who was very skeptical of Yuri. Um, but, but after a year's worth of studying, he's the one who recommended to the CIA that they, that they look into this man because they knew that the Soviets were uh, way ahead of them in, in all of these things. Cause the, the Soviets, they're not so, uh, you know, hot. they believe in these things and they've, so they had, you know, you people studying in nothing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Nick has a, a Soviet background. So we're, this is, this oh. is, Soviet. My parents, they come here when Soviet America fall. They have me made in Russia, born That's in right. America. That's right. He's not kidding. Finishing off about Yuri. He 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 loved the attention. He came to America um, and the CIA coordinated with the Stanford Research Institute. They knew that Yuri might be hesitant to come and just subject himself to experimentation for the CIA. So they had to be very careful how they presented it. They wanted to test his abilities um, and they wanted to see if it was possible to train people to be like him or, you know, duplicate him. And then they ended up, um, as I'll explain to Nick's chagrin, they ended up using him as an asset, as did Israel, as did Mexico. But did that's beside the point. They, they did right? use him. Yeah. Mm. The CIA did use him. Um, and they didn't use him because he's a magician, but we'll get into that. Sure. So, so this guy, Andrej, he wrote a book about the year he spent with Yuri in Israel. And then when he came to Stanford, they were very much aware that he had, you know, that people were very suspectful of him being a magician. And so they were determined that they were going to do this right. And they, they got two hard-nosed, like about as hardcore scientist people as they come. They got uh, Russell Targ, who's a physicist and an author. This dude is like, this dude came up with a laser, like, so he figured out how to send information with a laser. He patented that. He's one of the co-founders of the Stanford Research Institute uh, of their psychic and remote. He's the one who coined the term remote viewing. This is how old school this dude is. He's written papers. And I mean, he's, he's a genius. He's got awards for national aeronautics and space administration inventions and, and contributions to lasers and laser communication. And then the other guy who they had put in charge of Yuri was Dr. Hal uh, Puthoff. And this is a theoretical experimental physicist, um, like an expert in everything from gravitation to inertia, cosmology, energy research, ener energy generation. Um, he's, uh, he's about as these, these two guys were, they were the right people for the job. Um, and, and they didn't trust Yuri at all. They were fully aware that if he's a good magician, then he's going to be able to fool them. So at every turn, they had people watching him. They were testing him. They were always looking for metal on him. They were so suspectful of what he was doing that they, I mean, they know that he was working for Mossad. He was in effect a double agent. He was working for Mossad when he came here, which is why he was allowed to come here and, and let the CIA do whatever they wanted because he was to report back what the CIA was doing, what they knew and what they didn't know, right? And and so, but they, that's one of the reasons why they were so like, this is, are we really- are you Trained in deception, you're saying. Um, well, he was he was in the Israeli army, and he was he always wanted to be 007. That, you know, like mm -hmm. that was one of his dreams growing up. And uh, so, Nick thinks that because he's been uh, because his abilities have been inconsistent, that somehow he's a fraud. But the science and the documentation that have that has the come science. out of it, you know like i'm going to show you electron and micro uh my, my what's that word my, micros, microscopy like, uh -huh. i'm going to show you the scans of what the spoons and the metal look like when yuri is done bending him and how to this day they are an unexplained phenomenon of science not because he exerted force and broke the spoon as nick will do for you but simply because what happened to the spoon when yuri is done with it it would appear that he had to have had somehow created a 500 degrees celsius or hotter 
flame inside the structure of the, of the spoon or of the ring or of whatever amount of things that he bent. But he didn't because he was constantly had sensors and the people, there was no heat. So how do you displace molecules in a metal without using heat? They don't know. To this day, they don't know. And I have the scans to prove it. He's done it to more than just spoons. He's done it to rings. He's done it to all kinds of objects. So because, uh, well, Nick, go ahead. You, you, you talk, you tell them what a fraud he is. <laughs> so, so you were saying, let, let's just start with what he's famous for, the spoon. The spoon let's, bending. Let's do it like he does it. I wish I had a feather or something because I can use it as like a conduit for my psychic abilities. And you know what? We'll do it with a pen. Okay. The um, the plastic and the foam right here, we're going to use the foam part. It's a great conduit for all types of psychic energy. So we're going to do it just, just like Yuri, right? Did you already bend that spoon? No, 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 no. I've been holding it this entire Banging time. Banging on something. From a pack that I opened in front of our audience, a fresh pack. You okay, can, well, you banging on back. something. Let me see that all right, it's. All right. Uh... All right. But I'm telling Nick, to, I'm telling you. First, to you gotta bang it on something so I can see it's not already broken. Oh. Like, yeah, like that. There we go. Hey, look. We're gonna, we're gonna be heating it up. I'm telling you, heat. One watch, boss. Watch, watch. Watch as the metal's getting smoother. It's starting to bend. You see that? Yeah, great. I can see you squeezing the shit out of it. Um, I'm just holding it. Could yeah, I do. There's I no blood in the bend, tips of your fingers. Could I possibly bend metal like this, holding it like this? No, I'm bending it because I'm telling it. I'm telling it, bend, bend for me. You see that? You see? Oh! Yeah, it's broken. You can tell it's broken. <laughs> Dude, it takes wow. a long time to do it the magician's way. Yeah, let's talk about the heat for a second. Yeah, let's talk about the heat. Let's put it this way. If one were to start bending a spoon quickly back and forth, yeah, right? If he were to have a technique just to be able to bend it, and if you kept your finger on the spoon as you're bending it, what's yeah. going to end up happening is you'll burn your finger because heat is created because of the friction of the metal actually rubbing against each other, getting excited and breaking. And when those electrons, they break apart, that's what the heat is like. That's really? how the heat is being created. Okay. You can try it with the spoon yourself. So, so let me share my screen with you because I have a, I have a document that came out of a, a lab report that, that mm. speaks to otherwise. Okay. So this is a document that was written uh, called Fracture Surface Physics Indicating Teleneural Interaction by Wilbur Franklin, BA, MS, PhD, this doctor, right? Okay. Um, and he, you know, Geller was, I mean, there are dozens of institutions where he was studied at because he was such a phenomenon. Everyone wanted a piece of him. Um, and a lot of skeptics really hated that. They didn't know what the big deal was, but this is a, a metal physics analysis of four specimens broken by or in the presence of, of Mr. Yuri Geller, as you can read from the screen two stainless steel spoons, a stainless needle, and a platinum ring. Now, this is where it gets interesting, okay? As it was observed visually, when the spoon was withdrawn by Geller from a cup in a time of less than three seconds, the fracture in the second spoon was seen to occur as the spoon was held by, in Mr. Geller's fingers while he bent it in a very gentle manner back and oh, forth while he bent five or six it. times to <laughs> angles of approximately 45 degrees. Now listen, no apparent strain <laughs> on the part of the subject was observed during the bending or fracture process of the spoons. Mm. In the Apparent. case of the, now listen. Apparent, in, unless I trained to bend spoons for my career, my Oh shit, life. what did I just do? <laughs> Let me zoom back up. In the case of the platinum ring, the fracture appeared as a crack in the ring while an associate of the authors held it between the palms of her hands, gently in proximity of Mr. Geller. This was observed in a laboratory. Subsequently, Mr. Geller took the ring and gently bent and broke a small segment out of the shank. The fracture in the needle occurred as it laid on the table, approximately one meter from Mr. Geller. So he never touched the needle to bend it. So how do you explain that, Nick? And here's the, here's the, the <laughs> picture of the needle that he bent with his mind from an electron mic microscopy scan. So I can't explain this, but 
I will say this. There's something that happens with all of these psychics, like people with powers, and that it's really, really coincidental to me that the most amazing things they've ever done can never be replicated in a recorded video on television. So sure, maybe this guy wrote about this phen phenomenon, but we don't have any proof that one, Geller didn't manipulate it at that place. Because something that happened, something that's been reported by people who've studied his works and have tried to debunk him is that in almost every single case of recorded television material, except one, we're going to watch that one later, he so, always has access to the spoons, the objects beforehand. Okay, but he never didn't in once, this case. Never once, though, has he been recorded doing something like this. And okay. isn't that really ironic? Because now you're calling into question the integrity of these scientists and people who, yeah, yeah, who are yeah, reporting for this. Sure, for sure, they're total cool. I mean, they're like, talking about- To write this and actually believe it as men of science makes me question every other research paper they've ever done. <laughs> and it's really interesting because I was looking up this study as you were putting it forward. And the whole thing is funded by a random philanthropist. And so, so, so isn't that how most science is funded these days? Yeah, but something that you would agree with, Faust, if I'm right, is that money controls the pharmaceutical medical industry for the most part. If you have yeah. enough money, you can make any study go away and you can fake any result for the most part. That's going to come into play when we talk about Stargate later. He was observed doing this to objects which he had no prior contact to all the time. And, he, and in fact... All the time. Listen, I mean, what you're refer what are you referring to when you uh, you're referring to the Johnny Carson de debacle? The, the Johnny Carson debacle is the only time in history we can truly confirm that every single item was not only provided by Johnny Carson, but withheld from his entire team until the exact moment of filming. That's a perfect experimental uncontrolled setting and isn't it coincidental that suddenly it's the one time his powers felt weak when no, johnny carson it, what, an ex-magician is analyzing him on live time. johnny carson Very is coincidental John, listen there's a there's a man called the the he should be called the unamazing randy but he's called the amazing randy and he's a he's a magician and he was he was an escape artist and he was a magician and he no, 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 he wait, was wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a bad introduction, Faust. He is a genius <laughs> who for 20 years, 30 what? years until the day of his death had a worldwide contest that if you could prove to him you had powers, he would give you a million dollars. Yeah. And he was in charge Nobody of the contest. He was in charge of it. Okay. What you okay, don't know ahead, about what Nick is telling you is that before Yuri went on to Johnny Carson's little setup, Johnny Carson had the unamazing Randy on, and it was Randy who provided all the unbendable spoons. It was no, 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 Randy. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. You're saying this wrong. Here's what actually happened. All right, Carson tell me what actually called happened. up Randy, and he said, hey, I'm having Yuri Geller on. I'm very skeptical of his work. What would you suggest I do so that we can basically catch him? Randy suggested, hey, uh, just provide everything yourself and hold it until the actual taping. He didn't provide anything himself. He didn't send anything. And he was. How do you know there. that, though? How do you know that? Because Randy himself explained this. And oh, well, obviously, Randy explained it. Dude, they so set him Yuri up. Yuri Geller fail. gave me this impression over the week I was researching, and I'm sure Randy felt this same feeling. It's not jealousy. It was just like utter shock that such a low quality magician was able to achieve the success. That's he because did he was more than a magician. Were, after he was caught in it, like extremely precarious, like clearly, he oh, clearly <laughs> fake yes. circumstances. Listen, but can I share my screen? I want to show. Oh, go screen. for it. You should be able to. Yeah. When you see this, you're not going to solve much unless your eyes are really keen. And with this tape machine, I don't think we'll be able to 
to see are this projection system. I don't think we'll be able to see one of the things that is on here, but we'll give it a try. As soon as it's over, I'll explain to you another pertinent fact about it that you would have no way of knowing by watching the program. Let's see it. Somebody has a, a more personal thing. It works much better than just things, you know. What is oh, it? just things. Things he can't bend. Oh, good. Well, I'll try this. This looks nice. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so, Faust, I'm going to skip right here because it's going to take right. him about six minutes to bend this ladle. <laughs> this is the worst show I've ever seen. <laughs> because it's the only time he ever tried a ladle. A mistake. A calculated mistake. Do you feel that it's, it's becoming more, look, it's becoming like a plastic. <laughs> That's because. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. James Randi has to There's tell you something right now. The question was, did he supply these uh, spoons? No, they were supplied by a physicist who showed up there to be an expert observer of this. And indeed, he was a little more expert than Geller I gave him credit for, because I interviewed him after that, some years after that. And he said, they would not allow me to say on the program that though I supplied all the spoons and such, I didn't supply that one particular aluminum ladle. Boom! That came from nowhere. I asked the prop man afterwards. He said he maybe he manifested it. That was the mm. one. Remember the Geller chose Where did all of the company they had there, and they had about thirty. I didn't see them, but there were thirty come from? objects, the and that one okay, but was one just like let me let me show you a, a video, and you'll you'll yeah. see. Um, go ahead, go ahead. You'll see uh, his first interaction with um, this. Um, he was a CIA. I forget what his exact name. His name was Kit Green, and he was a, he was the CIA contract monitor. He was uh, pretty pretty higher up. Um, he had the ability to to okay funding and and you know rearrange projects. And so, so he got fired. The, so he was one of, the, and he was on for a very long time. Um, but his name was Kit Green. I think he was. I forget what, but he has a lot of stories about Yuri. But his first interaction with him is one of the most interesting of the story so I, I just want i want you to hear him tell it uh, yeah because yeah, he's, he's a cia guy um but let me share my screen hold on oh, here we go share screen these experiments with pat price seem to establish that psychics might help in locating kidnap victims <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about this was initially all about testing his electromagnetics nothing mm. to do with psychic remote viewing but his arrival at SRI soon changed the entire dynamic for Targ and Putov and their secret CIA contract monitor, Kit Green. In a very uh, short period of time, a week or 10 days, I got a phone call at headquarters. So it was the chief scientist of the laboratory at Stanford Research Institute, and he was talking about other aspects of Harry Geller's capabilities. And I, of course, said, well, what other kinds of things are you talking about? And uh, Without much of a pause, the scientist said, well, he says he can see things at a distance. And I said, no, he can't. <laughs> they said, yes, he can. I said, no, he can't. And they said, well, he's right here. Say hi to Uri Geller. I said, hi, Uri. And voice in the background said, hi, Kit. And I said, well, uh, what can you see? Now, this wasn't and, on Skype, was it? No, 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 no. I was on a telephone, a black. I mean, this is this is this is early 70s before Skype and before cell phones and all that. And he said, OK, I'm sitting at my desk at CIA at Langley, Virginia. I will put something on my desk and let's see if Uri can get it. So. We didn't tell Uri what this was all about. because We couldn't admit to him that we were working with CIA. We just said we had a scientific colleague on the East Coast, and we'd like to see if this remote viewing that you do, which typically we've been doing locally, you know, works over long distance. And he's going to put something in his desk like for you to describe it. I, I turned, just as I will do now, and I picked up a book, which is the same book that I had oh. on my desk. Oh. At the time of this phone call many, many years ago, this, this book is a collection of medical illustrations of the nervous system. And I had it on my desk at 
the headquarters building because I was using it for part of my work. And I opened it up to a page, and I just stared at it. And he said, well, seeing something kind of strange. So he sat there, and he scribbled on paper and crumpled up and threw it away, scribbled some more, threw it away. This is the guy who was having a phone call. I scribbled something down and said, well, I, I don't know what to think. It looks like I have made a drawing of a pan of scrambled eggs. And yet I have the word architecture coming in strong. So what he handed us was a sheet of paper that had this scrambled eggs look and the word architecture written across the top. I later got a copy of that drawing and I was astonished to find what he had drawn maybe does look like scrambled eggs, but it was a section of the human brain, a sagittal section. Oh, was it? A bunch of scribbles was. Attention was Listen. he had written across the top of his drawing the word architecture. Architecture, I had written in my handwriting the word architecture. Why? A viral infection. Interesting. I was looking at the biological warfare effect on the nervous system of a threat virus. And I'd written on my notes the book, Architecture of a Viral Infection. Where's the photo of his? Then, that is it. They, they, they did no, 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 no. That was that was his book. Where's yeah, Yuri's that was his photo? Book. Where's Yuri's photo? Oh, I don't know. He said he had a copy of it. So sure, he does. <laughs> Why would he lie? These guys are hardcore scientists. They're 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 natural doubters. You know, what I mean, like if it can't be measured, they're not really interested in it. But the fascinating thing about what they found out about Yuri was he was beating odds that were one trillion to one. 10 million to one over Are we and about over Stargate? we're talking about well i mean it, they ended up calling it stargate but but yeah we're talking about well, my cia documents <laughs> so declassified. i was shocked when i found out why this experiment was conducted how it was conducted and what happened when it was replicated let's find out dirty reds tricked mm -hmm. the pure hard-working americans into dirty the russians were here's your symbol 16 million rubles a year on quote psychotronic research and while it turns out they were probably punking us we nonetheless we decided to show those communists the brains <laughs> the by spending 20 million dollars of public money training psychics to help the military stargate's earliest and most foundational experiments conducted with cia funding in 1972 at the stanford research institute by oh Dr. The, the place we were Kuda. talking about and the guy who conducted the experiment. That's right. Those, that's them. Fists. Step one. Find a person. Any person, actually. Part of Targ and Puthoff's theory is that anyone can express anyone. But the person does have to be willing yeah, to... Yeah, he came to that theory decades he was, he later. He was one of those anybody. So the recruiting a renaissance He's experience. not wrong. Step two. Come up with a list of 12 distinct locations. Do not tell the maybe psychic person about them. Step three. Oh, yeah, I've seen this video. Maybe psychic person in a room with an experimenter. Step four, without telling either of the people in the room, have another experimenter choose one of the 12 places and then drive there along with one to three observers. Step five, once at the site, have the observers walk around and look at stuff acting as quote, psychic beacons, whatever that means. Step six. Yeah, I saw this. Have the main Let's watch it person all. describe and draw pictures of what the observers are seeing despite not knowing where they are. Record this. Step seven. Take the maybe psychic to the site so they can see how they did, but do not record this. Step eight. Repeat steps one through seven nine times with different locations, doing a few a day. Step nine. Get an objective judge, take them to all nine of the locations, and give them the nine unedited transcripts of the maybe psychic person's attempts at descriptions. Step ten. Attempts. Have the judge attempt to match up the transcripts to the locations. Step 11. Analyze the data. If the objective judge successfully matched the locations to the transcripts, which again contained only a conversation between the maybe psychic person and the experimenter, both trapped in a room and not told where the observers were, then the maybe psychic person must have accurately read the psychic beacons of the observer. Must have, can right? Be from a maybe psychic person to a psychic psychic person, and all of our understanding of the world needs to be reconsidered. Going so that's the experiment. Odds at picking randomly, these six judges in talk. Yeah, but we're talking about Yuri Geller, not the 12 no, no, this, different. But, but this is the experiment that's that's referenced in every single piece of evidence you've given me thus but far. But it's not the experiment the that I'm same, going to reference. 
Okay, but but thus far, when we talk about Yuri Geller, Stargate, and the CIA, we're talking about this right here. It was published in the steam scientific journal Nature and in Nature. Psychics are real. It is the experiment you're talking about. <laughs> I'll tell you about our sponsor, Craig. Craig is a guy I met on the street corner, and he sells powder that smells great. Wait, uh, what's that? <laughs> it's the Kiwis. They found us, and they're here to ruin everything. Kiwis. Specifically, here to ruin everything. Well, I'm going to fast forward. Marks and Richard oh. Kamen, two New Zealand researchers who recreated Targ and Puthos experiments as exactly as they could. But when it came time for the judges to do the judges, those are actors. It went terribly. Despite the subjects being convinced they had experienced incredible psychic visions, yeah. of a single judge correctly matched a single one of their descriptions. Yeah, so they weren't fucking psychic. Which raised the question, what? Plus, in a blunder that ranks alongside this wooden horse rocks, I bet there's nothing inside it. It seems like some of the original transcripts given to judges may have listed the dates they were recorded. To test their queuing hypothesis, David Marks was given a set of transcripts from the original experiments in a list of locations, but he was not permitted to visit them. Despite not knowing what any of the places looked like, he matched all the transcripts perfectly to the location. What? Only on the cues. He's psychic. He successfully repeated. No, he, we he, found he, the psychic. This is yeah, ridiculous. Dude. All these hard proof of experiments, bogus findings, may have led to twenty years of use of CIA and military research into psychics. All he would need to Useless. know. Keyword. All he would have had to do is study the study the reports. I mean, this is like. The stupidest fucking debunk I've ever seen in my life. So we anybody who studied the, the reports would be able America. to match them without seeing. We spent forty million dollars in twenty years because Russia tricked us into studying psychic powers, and it was deemed useless and illegitimate in the end. That's it's all I'm still, trying to say. It's still being used. I will let you share fast. My so, point has been made. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. The reason why Yuri Geller is an exception in every way to the rule is is because he's con he's consistent right and it's not just oh, with his remote he? viewing which which at times bordered on precognition which is why they were really excited about him and and they were trying to finagle ways so they could get him to do work for them even though they were the cia they they that the documents that went back and forth between targ like the the stanford and the cia were like Look, we're going to present ourselves as representatives of the NIH at, because we know that Geller will not work with us if he knows her for the CIA. Like, so this is what we're Where going to say. Where did you hear this? I read the, the, the classified documents. Mm, okay. We'll insert those two for your. Uh, for, well, actually, for, no, no. You know what? That makes sense. If I'm a fraud, I do not want to be studied in a controlled setting. Of course, it's different. No, they were to looking to use him as an asset in the field. And they and were trying to figure out ways to do it. that they would un, that he would unwittingly help them because they knew he would have a problem being used in any kind of weapon or the you know defense situation. He has no ability to do that, and he doesn't want to put lives at risk. Right, right. That's why. Anyway, so so and I want I want I want, to show, <laughs> I want to I want to share my screen with you and just show you this, which which will put the icing on the cake for oh. everyone here. Can't wait to bring out my sprinkles. Okay. Let's go. It describes. Drawings were placed in double sealed envelopes oh, that's space, okay. for which none of the experimenters had the combination. This is Geller's representation of what he believed was sealed in the envelope. At no time during these experiments did he have any advanced knowledge of the target material. What is that? In fact, this is the most off target of the drawings that he did. Here, the experiment is repeated. This time, I want to see the experiment. Sender, just to check that the identity of the sender is of no significance in the experiment. This is a drawing that Geller has made to correspond to the target object. The rectangle on the clipboard represents the TV screen in Geller's mind on which he claims to project the image he is trying to draw. As you can see, he is quite elated about getting the right answer. Here I, I can explain this perfectly. This is a this is a collection of the original target. The original this and his replication. Easy magic trick. These were done in a steel box. I could do this in a steel box myself. And a steel listen, box makes it easier. In listen to the variables. Which of, which of these ten cans holds the steel ball bearing? The experimental protocol is for the experimenter to remove the cans one at a time in response to Geller's instructions as he points or calls out a can top number. He has made his choice. The steel ball 
is found. <laughs> Why is every experiment a classic magic Listen. trick? The experiment was a different target object. One of these cans is filled with room temperature water. He is asked to make his choice both by writing the number down as well as making a selection by hand. Having made the selection, now looks to see whether water is inside the can. Now listen to the results. He now waters the plant by the contents of the can. We repeated this type of experiment 14, 14 times. times. The target was water, a steel ball bearing, a small permanent magnet, paper wrapped ball bearing, and the sugar cube. Listen. The latter two targets were not located. On the other 12 targets, interesting. Take a guess and was On the other 12, in every he, got a he got it correct every time. The heavy object was found easily. The one you could easily find with your touch versus the sugar cube, the one that should be impossible, wasn't found. Very coincidental. Paper wrap Listen to the odds the of him getting these right. The latter two targets. The odds for a non magician. Just, just want to say. On the other 12 targets, he did make a guess and was correct in every instance. The whole array of this sure. run had an a priori probability of a trillion to one. Trillion to one. Of one course. trillion to one. For someone who doesn't know the Same trick. with the dice box. Watch this. I'm sure a magician could do it 10 out of 10. Why is everything a magic trick? <laughs> Let's test them. This is not a magic, magic trick. Magic trick objects that are normally used by magicians. This is part of his remote viewing ability. He's getting the number right in a, in a steel box in front of observers. How is he doing that, Nick? Out of 10 tries, where is the paperwork that shows 10 tries passed time, twice eight got eight right? Correct. Do you know how hard that, that is? Gave us a probability that is that is very difficult. That's a million to one but, odds, but no errors. something they do not know. Here, did you know that the like well, no errors? Did it say no errors? No errors, he okay. passed twice. If they don't okay. count the pass as an error, eight out of ten wait, times wait. you got it right. That's one twice, he, yeah. So they did it eight, they did it ten times. He passed twice because he couldn't see the dice. On the eight, he guessed he got it exactly right. There's All one right, out of six. Then, the, well, I mean, like it's documented. Why, so whether why, you trust it or not. why would he pass? The only reason. Okay, wait here. Because yeah. he's psychic, and you're a human. Your brain is not. You're not. He's you, psychic. Oh my goodness. Listen, Nick. Sometimes. Or here, here, here. Let Jet. Let James, the great James Randy, explain it. Now, unamazing. Miserable. Did you see Mr. Geller do is this is what I promised you a while ago, which I thought was coming up on the screen. We're about to see him do the drawing with one person sitting in front of him. He believes that nobody is watching him, nobody is filming him. But he so what's going on is he's being recorded on a candid, like punk type surprise show, and he has no idea the camera is recording. Uh, I'll just fast forward what James is about to say. How does he normally do the remote viewing trick? It's very simple. And I'll explain why it's very weird to you. If you had to, if someone were to draw something like this, and all you have to do is turn around, right? This is what Yuri does every time, along with every magician. If you're turning around and someone's drawing something behind you, you don't have to cover your eyes. You're already turned around. Why does every magician cover their eyes? Because they have a tiny mirror right here that can see past their shoulder and easily make out the simple shapes that an average person could draw. You never have seen this trick successfully performed in history by any magician when you have a real artist who can draw complex shapes. What does a normal person draw in about the span of like a minute on the spot? A house, a smiley face, a skull, uh, a car. <laughs> People, Dude, I, I was surprised to see the plane in the remote viewing experiment. But the like CIA the has the remote triangle. viewers employed right now. They no, have they them and, and, and you can use them. You can no, call don't. them. No, I can't. <laughs> You're fucking shot. Let's call them right now. <laughs> there are people who are professional remote viewers who are so fucking good at this. And you can be taught. Even you, you can, can be, be taught. A professional fraud. A pro like... I, I see yeah. them as very intuitive. Okay, because put it this way. It, intuitive. If any one person could truly remote view, 
Why do they all disappear when Osama bin Laden is in a cave? Very Osama convenient. Osama bin Laden was a CIA ass and he was never in a fucking cave, Nick. Because did, he was, he was never responsible for shit. Why they when any person that anybody needs to find is missing? Nobody or- was actually looking for Osama bin Laden, Nick. Mm. They knew where he was the whole fucking time, okay? Stop getting into episode two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just watch this. This is going to be my favorite video. Boom! He bent it. You saw that? You saw that? that I didn't see bent? anything. Here, I'll show you. Ready? Watch. I'm going to hold the spoon and do it at the same time. Boom! That's it. He literally just bent the spoon. Yeah, what do you Look. think the amazing uh, schmuck does? He does the same I mean, thing. The same thing you just did. Schmucks. That's my the point. point. Is so that wait, wait, wait. Yuri Geller? Wait. Faust, Faust, Faust. Wait. The spoon is like this. Seconds before, and I mean seconds before, it was like this. A normal spoon. The only thing that changed this entire time is he held it with two hands right there and bent it. So this is the thing about Yuri Geller is he. Be, because he was working for the the CIA, the Mossad, and the Mexican Secret Service, and and well, I don't know if he was working directly. He was trained to hold but, spoons with two hands from a young age. But the magic tricks that he did do you know, on occasion like this, he would resort to the same tactics that you'll see on Amazing Randy and and mm, other magicians do. It's a, it's a sleight of hand. It's he a misdirection. Like most magicians, it's a simple misdirection. And so when he was called upon to do certain things in uncontrolled environments, he would resort to his very, very rudimentary and clumsy magician skills. That's been written about. And part of (laughs) Yuri's charm. And you still believe in his real psychic powers, given that? But his abilities have been documented and i mean tens of thousands of documents in in no, cia troves and they have rewritten what the cia and the government has understood to be he passed um, in one biased experiment and are, there's no other document and proving anything i'm going to include anything. links to those documents in the video description of this Nick, Please. I've I've enjoyed obliterating your skeptic. I ass. will write essays in the comments for all the fans who still believe but in this. We're gonna call this a route. Call it a day. We'll, we'll see you guys next episode. I gotta take my dog out. Peace. I hope I changed your mind. <laughs> Nick, love you, pal. Peace. Peace, bro. <laughs>